Hello, here I am back again with part two of your double page spread lesson. So last time I spoke to you guys, the last place I was at with my double page spread for um, that gaming feature I was designing, um, I had basically, I got all my layout in place, my design in place, main things like the headline. I knew where all of the key features were, were gonna go. I hadn't filled in the text yet. So that's what I'm gonna help you with today. Um, also, I'm aware that like a lot of you, your ideas for your magazines, you're not doing a gaming magazine and it's not maybe this double page spread, this demonstration hasn't been that helpful for you. Um, but if you stay tuned halfway through this video, I've actually made a further double page spread um, for a fashion magazine and it's based on uh, casual looks worn by Madison Beer and I've designed a double page spread around that. So probably for a lot of you that will um, kind of provide you with a lot more tips and tricks that are relevant to your design. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this cover. So um, as you guys know, in media studies and class, when we're analyzing media products, we don't just analyze the visual. Um, we analyze written codes as well, language codes. So in many ways, what you write in your article, you have to take just as much care um, and pay just as much attention to detail as you have done with uh, the more visual aspects of your product. So let's just recap again then what the minimum requirements are for the double page spread. So you need to have as a minimum a headline. Um, with your headline as well, you'll notice from looking at other headlines to other double page spreads, they tend to like, a headline needs to be catchy, it needs to be specific, so it needs to be pretty obvious from the headline what the article is going to be about. Headlines uh, often use kind of language devices to catch your attention, like they'll use alliteration or they'll use rhyme or a play on words. Uh, so have a think about that when you come up with your headline, if you haven't already. You also need a stand first. So just to remind a stand first. It's like an introduction to your article to whatever's coming. It's normally the text is a little bit larger than the rest. Um, just outlines what your article is going to be about. A byline. A byline is a little line of text where you say who the article's by. Um, article text, 300 words. So use the word count tool on Word and make sure that you've got enough words there. That's the guidance that the exam board gives, uh, 300 words approximately. Pull quotes. Pull quotes, remember, are a quote that you find in your text that's something quite catchy, quite attention grabbing, um, that might make people want to kind of pay attention to this article, want to read it. Um, you want to pick two, uh, one or two from your article and what you essentially do is you copy that quote, you then paste it, make it bigger, uh, make it stand out. Um, it's kind of, it works like bait for getting people to want to read your article, essentially. So those were the minimum bits of text you require. On top of that, you also mustn't forget to include anchorage for your images. So it's not, it's not often done um, in a media product, just where you have kind of like an image and there's no explanation what it is, what it relates to, why it's there. Images will always tend to include anchorage. So anchorage is um, a bit of text that anchors the meaning of the image. So it ties down the meaning of that image, helps us understand what the image is there for, what it's illustrating. Um, so you need to include captions for your images as well. They can't just be random floating images around on your page. So I'll talk a bit more about what you can put for those captions in a bit. And yep, you need your main image and four additional ones. So one big image, four additional smaller ones. Right, so I need to write my article, my 300 words for my article um, to fill out um, that space there, those columns there. So you might be kind of just stuck like, well, I don't know what to write. A really good way of gaining inspiration and ideas for what to write and put into that article is simply to just Google, like I just Googled fighting game review. And what it brought me to was this, it brought me to a review of Tekken 7, 
um, which is actually a really good game if you haven't played it. And uh, what I did was I just scanned through it and started to get ideas of what they talk about in relation to the game. Uh, so took some inspiration from there. Then I decided to put all my texts in a Word document first so it was easier to edit and manipulate because kind of it can be really fiddly when it comes to kind of like messing about with your text. So what I noticed when I was reading that article and others was that magazine articles all tend to do a very similar thing with language. Um, they seem to use lots of different language devices that work to draw in a, a reader and really capture their attention. So for instance, they will very often use direct address. So direct address, remember, is when you are directly addressing the reader or the audience. So it's when you say you, or they'll use the collective pronoun we. It makes you feel like you're part of something and you're being involved in whatever the magazine's talking about. So I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna work that into my text that I use. So you'll see here, I've highlighted all the places in my own piece of writing where I've used direct address, just so you can see how often I've done that. That's very conventional of a magazine article to do that. So try and work that into yours. Um, also rhetorical questions, so is it worth the hype? Rhetorical questions, as you know, get a reader intrigued. So what you're doing here really is bringing in a lot of kind of like your uh, English language knowledge uh, to write in this article to make it a really convincing one. Uh, so yeah, direct address. The next thing that I notice, these articles, they use a lot of over the top exaggerative language. Again, just makes whatever they're talking about seem more exciting. So I've put exclusive, everyone's talking about it like hyperbolic hyperbole there everybody's talking about it dazzling spectacle never before jaw-dropping exciting incredible stunning blah 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 try and work in some nice adjectives and phrases um that are very like over the top exaggerated as well um the other thing that uh magazine articles on a specific topic will generally do is use a lot of like subject specific jargon so like words that are like technical vocab and words that are to do with that topic so remember your magazine's going to be a special interest magazine so you're going to want to use vocab specific to that interest so for gaming i've put 3d fighter arcade sony vr technology just stuff that gamers would know about words that they use format virtual reality uh, tutorial system, uh, unlock additional features, bosses, graphics, online multiplier, player, etc, etc. Uh, that's how I came up with my writing. So I came up in that way, I came up with my stand first, and um, my article text. Uh, so I went to Canva then, back into Canva. So if you just log into Canva, it'll come up with a page saying your design, you click back on your design, it should be as you left it. And I then um, pop the text in. So I had to play around for a bit um with the text to make it look neat so remember i told you that there's that little tool um which has four lines on it sometimes they're lined up to the right side sometimes the left side you press it like three times it makes your text centered you want to press it four times so it turns your text into a really neat block if you can see there as i've done that if you just center it it'll be all jagged it'll look messy so you want your text all defined into neat blocks um, when I've spoken about, when, sorry, when I've completed the byline there, I got rid of my name. Uh, you cannot use real names in this coursework. You can't use real names of like, you like, can't use your own name, your friends' names. You can't use real celebrities' names. You have to change everything, make it all, uh, adapt it all. So I just put a random name in there. It took me a while to get my columns organized really neatly in a way that didn't leave random bits of blank space. Everything was in neat lines. Uh, I had to faff about a bit to get that right, so you may well do as well. So yeah, faffed about with that for a bit. Played with text size. Text size, that's an important one. Um, a lot of you were sending me double page spreads where you're using like size 24 text. Although the text looks really small to you when you're messing about with it on Canva, remember this is gonna get blown up to A3 size. A3 is big, like that's big, bigger, twice A4. So actually you probably wanna use, I've used there a size 12 font and that looks about right. Because if you open a magazine, look in a magazine, you'll see the text, it's just, it's not that big. 
Uh, so let's see for text. Right, played about with it, all good. So there I've got my article text ready, I've got my stand first ready. Next job was filling in captions for my images, so creating um, Anchorage. So there are a couple of things you can do uh, for your captions. If you, oh and here, here's the point as well. If anybody in your family is going to the supermarket, see if they don't mind going by the magazine stands and picking you up a gaming magazine or a fashion magazine because there are like teeny tiny details to the design of a magazine that um, you can only see by like really looking really close up. So it would be useful for you to have one of those. Um, yep, yeah, so... Oh, sorry, and I've included my uh, review text there. I made that a bit bigger so it stands out a bit more. Looks good to me. Uh, right, captions. So I, you can caption the image with kind of what's been illustrated in the image. So I've put uh, VR technology takes combat to a whole new level uh, as the caption for that image there. There's one option. You can also uh, caption with um, like an image credit so where that image has come from who that image is courtesy of so um, in this case I'm going to say that the image is courtesy of Sony Entertainment so Sony Entertainment if you didn't know already it's the massive big company big conglomerate that's uh, behind the PlayStation franchise um, and its various games so I credited them uh, I also put, if you can see, I put um, a little copyright sign. And you might be wondering, well, how do, how do I get a little copyright sign? What you have to do is, on Word, put bracket, C, bracket. When you press space, it'll change it into a little copyright sign. You know, that little C in a circle. And that looks very professional. Also, what I've done by mentioning um, Sony Entertainment, that's what's called, as you'll know already, when you um, reference um, another media product or company um, within your own media product, that's called intertextuality. When one media product references another. So that's quite smart, actually, because that's showing that I have an understanding of well, the conventions of a magazine, it's conventional to credit other media companies for uh, images, etc. But I just have an understanding of the industry in which my magazine is operating. Uh, the gaming industry, with Sony being a major conglomerate within that industry. Um, I also added some branding to the top corners. So, uh, like I told you last time, this is going to be part of a magazine called Techman. Um, I thought carefully about my branding as well, so your masthead, like your um, branding for your magazine, the font that you use really needs to reflect your brand and what it's all about. So I use quite a cool feature on Canva, you can actually, in the font, you can type in a word, so I typed in tech, I think, and it'll bring up fonts that really link in to that vibe, so you could type in like... Uh, classy, pretty, swirly, uh, tons of different things and it'll bring you up a nice font that really captures uh, the essence of that. So that's what I did here. I got quite a technological looking font um, and yeah, that was it for that double paste spread and that was it done. So um, hopefully if you're going for a similar layout, a similar type of article that's kind of like a report or a review, hopefully that should give you some inspiration obviously though as you'll know from your research double page spreads come in all sorts of different shapes and forms and um it's not always an article a straightforward article um especially when it comes to fashion magazines so what i've done is i've gone and produced another sample double page spread for you guys to look at so yeah i've um gone and done a fashion double page spread um in a, in a similar way to with the gaming magazine um i needed inspiration for like well the article what's the article going to look like what's it going to be about uh what can i write in it so i did a bit of googling and i actually found this website which i think is actually really helpful because it's um 
targeted it's fashion college fashion.net and it's fashion articles targeting a younger audience so i had to scroll through and i saw that they kind of featured all sorts of different types of articles so um outfits inspired by disney obviously disney's popular with the younger audience dakota johnson style uh so it's shown you how to get the look of somebody famous that was quite um that's quite a popular type of article to feature in a fashion magazine uh loungewear looks inspired by disney princesses cute and comfy spring to summer fas fashion essentials the things you need to have products so um tips or a guide for every occasion how to upcycle clothes so like how to uh adapt your clothes customer clothes outfits inspired by netflix etc so these articles are definitely targeting a younger audience and they're about something very specific they're not general they've all got a specific focus uh so i'd look through i thought hmm what could i use to inspire me and then i found um this article on madison beer so obviously she's a singer who's popular with the younger audience and the article is madison beer style how to get madison beer's loungewear for less um I thought, oh, this will this will work then. So, I just have to um, use images of her, and then um, give examples of how you can put that outfit together with clothes from uh, real life shops. Uh, so I thought, brilliant! I've got my images now. Obviously, in the real thing, I wouldn't be allowed to submit this because these aren't my images. I haven't taken them. So. Although you're going to be using um, images you've taken from online for now, have a good think in your head. Right, if I'm doing an article on, um, I don't know, denim shorts, do I have denim shorts that I can take a picture of me or my friend in? Or uh, do they have denim, denim shorts? Or does a sibling have denim shorts? Um, I'm featuring Nike Air Force Ones. Do I have a pair of those I can take a picture of? Or like can I borrow someone to take a picture of really think carefully you're featuring products you need to have those products to take pictures of so have a little look in your wardrobe look in your friend's wardrobe it might help before you go ahead making an article where you're not going to be able to get the images for uh so I thought right I'll just nick those images for now and I've got a concept brilliant how am I going to lay it out on the page I've got my images but how will I lay it out on the page um, as I've done before, I Google double page spreads, fashion double page spreads, um, and I saw, okay, so they tend to, like, do a bigger picture of the person wearing the outfit, and then, like, products scattered all of, all around them, um, with, like, kind of little sections of text and blocks, um, explaining, uh, like, the product, where it's from, etc, etc. Um... So I thought, right, that's what I want to do, but how how is that going to look? And I need to make sure I fit in all the minimum requirements again. So I reminded myself of the minimum requirements. I need a headline, a stand first, a byline, article text, pull quotes, uh, main image for additional ones with captions. So I start sketching again. Uh, having used those other layouts for inspiration, and again, it would be so, so useful if you could get somebody to pick you up a magazine, a similar magazine from the supermarket, because there'll be loads of examples in there you can just flick through. So I, first of all, I couldn't use her actual name. I couldn't use Madison Beer because, like, everything has to be made up in this course book, so I just changed it to Morgan Beer. Uh, for my headline, I put Casual Cool because it's an article on casual looks, her casual looks, um, and alliteration there. I thought would be a nice little device to use. Uh, stand first beneath the, must, uh, the headline, quite conventional, a little space for the byline. Um, I thought, right, I'm gonna do like a block of text on one side with a big main image. You'll also notice I've scribbled their caption. Uh, that's where I'm gonna put my caption because I don't want it to disrupt, disrupt the main image. I just want it to be small and tuck it off to one side. And you'll see in most magazines, that is what they do. They just like tuck it off down near the bottom or to one side. Um, I drop a capital there, my page numbers. Um, and then another image with a little caption. So I thought I'll have one main image of an outfit and then a further outfit on the other side. And then with the little clothing items like, dotted around it 
um, and then like a speech bubble explaining the outfit and where you can get the products. So everything's got anchorage, all the images are explained. I've got all the minimum requirements there and a couple of pull quotes as well where I can fit them in. So that was that, right. Now you'll notice in magazines and you'll notice in the design I'm intending to put together there, you really want to be able to cut the background out of images. And obviously that's something we could do really easily in school on Photoshop, but we don't all have Photoshop at home. So I found a workaround uh, on the app store. I think on the Google one as well, this is the Apple app store. There's this app called, if you search for it, Magic Eraser Background Editor. So download that on your phone or on a tablet or an iPad or whatever. When you download it, it comes up with this premium advertisement. Don't pay for anything, like get it free. Just press the cross like the little X in the top left there, and um, you just can use it for free. Like, don't bother with that. Uh, right, okay, so I've got one of the images from the website of, like, the clothing I want to use, but it's got a white background. I want to cut that out so that I can overlay things and it just looks more professional. So what you want to do is, first of all, try the magic wand tool. It's in the bottom left down there. It's highlighted in orange now. ideally find images that have plain backgrounds because and a background that's a different color to the products that that's the product that's featured so you'll see like you click the magic wand on the background it deletes everything that's the same color um but then if your product for example that white handbag is probably going to get deleted um so if you see i click it yeah, it's deleted most of the background really good but it has deleted my handbag um, I'm not bothered because I don't want to feature that, so I'm just going to use the rubber tool and just rub that out anyway and just keep the stuff that I do want. So I've got jumper, hoops, sunglasses. There's an annoying background around those trousers, so I'm just going to use, there's a rubber tool. The second one along is a rubber tool, so I'm just going to rub off the things that I don't want. You can zoom in like you would do on an image normally on your phone and um, so you can get all that detail cut out. Oh, so if it ever does cut out something you want to keep, you can press undo or there's a little button in the middle called restore and if you colour over it, it brings back the thing that got deleted. So yeah, it's a bit fiddly. It's It was easier for me to use to be fair because I've got like um, an Apple Pencil so I could just like scribble do it really quickly but like you can get there. It's definitely easier if things are on a blank background already. It's a lot easier because then you just use the magic wand. So I've got my image. I then go and save it as a png file remember png files are transparent um come back to canva right first things first oh remember for your design um landscape just pick a4 landscape obviously it's gonna be a3 but we can zoom in we can blow it up so just use a4 landscape poster for now as the type um you upload all your images that you want and place those in first they are what takes up most of your design and they are what kind of guides you on where to place text. So I always get the images in first. Remember as well to be aware of the staple line. Don't put an image right plonk in the middle of the page because you'll have staples going through it. So remember that little pink line pops up when you hover by it to show you where it is midway through the page, where the staples would go. You get those in place. Um, I used elements to kind of put boxes for where I was going to put my stand first and my article text. Uh, in elements as well, I typed in speech bubble and I got all these cute shapes. So I thought, I've seen other magazines do that, so I will uh, steal that little design element uh, and I put some nice bubbles. You'll notice I've picked like white and grey for my colour scheme and there was a reason behind that reason being my article is about casual clothing so when i think casual clothing i do think white and gray like white t-shirts gray joggers uh sweats that type of thing so that's the logic behind those choices uh place everything it does take fiddling always try and imagine like your page has got like a grid of squares and everything needs to be like on a line don't just have things randomly placed about the place. Um, put my last head in. Um, and you want to as well, don't use too many fonts. It makes it look messy. Also, if you can, incorporate a font from your cover. 
the best course works are where you can see that the cover and the double page spread are really clearly linked. Um, you can tell they're from the same magazine. So try and incorporate at least a couple of the same design elements from your masthead into your double page spread. Don't make them identical in any kind of way, but copy in a couple of fonts uh, across the two can always help. I write down the fonts that I've used um, as well um, so that I can like have that um, consistency across the double page spread in case I forget the font. But you can also uh, remind yourself of the font just by clicking on the bit of text, the, the font will pop up again so you know which one to use in your next bit. Right, so, so I've got my design in place, ready to go, it's just about putting the text in. I did exact same kind of things as I did with the one from my previous double page spread. I thought, right, I want to use direct address, I want to use collective pronouns, make people feel like um, I am their friend, this magazine is their friend. So we're all about keeping it casual, see how it's done is a rhetorical question. Um, another thing I've used here, which uh, and is very conventional of um, fashion magazines, is I've used a lot of the imperative, so do this, don't do that. The article's meant to be like advice-based instructional, so I've used a lot of imperatives. Forget looking 24-7 stunning, look to Morgan, etc. Um, girls, so I'm addressing my audience of young women by calling them girls. Babe as well, that's like also, it gives it quite like a friendly mode of address, which you'll find is quite common in girls' magazines. Um, you feel like the person writing the article is your friend, they're calling you girl, babe, etc. Another thing I did uh, pay attention to was I um, mentioned things, uh, intertextual links that would resonate in my target audience. So I talked, I used kind of slang that they would potentially use. So my magazine's called OOTD. That's an acronym for outfit of the day. People often put that hashtag on their Instagram when they're showing like what they're wearing today. And it's something that to do with fashion that would really resonate with a young audience. So that's why I picked that. Um, and um, I mentioned hanging out with mates, binge watching Netflix. These are thing, all things that young girls tend to do. So when I was getting you to do your research of your target audience, this is why, um, so that you can make a product that really appeals to them. I used uh, the word fire. Uh, I talked about not breaking the bank because younger people don't tend to have that much money to spend. Um, so yeah, I tried to use their language to appeal to their personal identity. Um, colloquial stuff, sunnies, bang on trend, 90s inspired look, like 90s are very in at the minute, also I believe. Um, I also used a lot of fashion jargon, so like I did with gaming, I've used style, staples, rock this look, accessories. Like, it sounds really cheesy and cliched, but most magazines are. They use the same type of cliches, little same types of phrasing, so I just went with that. Uh, and then it was just about kind of copying and pasting all the text in. And yeah, so made all that neat to find the text again into a neat square using that align tool. Got my drop capital in place. Um, uh huh. So in the little bubbles, I did a little write up of like the look and what it involved and why it was nice and whatnot. And then at the bottom, you'll notice it's quite small, but um, I did what a lot of magazines do, which was I listed the products and their prices and where you can buy them from. And the places I listed of you being able to buy them from are places that are really popular uh, with young girls at the minute. So I'll put jumper and joggers, uh, co-ord, because co co-ords are in fashion as well, uh, Twenty nine ninety nine from CreateLittleThing.com, dot com trainers uh eighteen ninety nine sunglasses four ninety nine hoops two ninety nine all from Primark. Uh, young girls do tend to shop at Primark, so for it's not breaking the bank either. Primark's cheap, so did that, and then I just put like the items in bold, so like it was clear that that was the caption for the image. Um, oh yeah, something that can save you loads of time, especially when you like formatting your text. Um, and getting it all to look consistent 
if you look at the the same bar where you've got your font and your font color and all of that lot um if you look next to the little on the right hand side you've got the little dustbin thing next to that you've got um two squares with the plus in them if you click on a bit of text and then you press that button it duplicates it so that can be a really fast way of just um getting all the text you want to look the same and then you just edit the words so i use duplicate uh to save time uh i made sure i was using consistent fonts across all the fonts are small as well they're like size 12 size 10. uh i'll put my little pull quote in place it really sums up the essence of the article cozy and chic put it in a different font so it stands out but again a font that i've used also in the headline and then I just fiddled around, got it all to, page numbers in, got it all to look neat, as neat as I could. And then that's the finished product. So hopefully that's been some help. Um, hopefully you can all now, um, by after half term, um, have a, like, a really decent looking cover and double page spread in place. Um, I'll be coming back to you with more videos about how to write something called your statement of aims. But that's for next time. So until then, see you later.